You'll meet her. She's very pretty, even though sometimes she's sad for many days at a time. You'll see when she smiles, you'll love her. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Pan's Labyrinth Guillermo del Toro, figure number three, Ophelia. One of Guillermo del Toro's most visually stunning films, Pan's Labyrinth is a dark yet beautiful fantasy set five years after the Spanish Civil War. The insidious brutality of the real world continues to cast a long shadow, infiltrating even the fantasy world of 11-year-old Ophelia, who begins a terrifying reality-spanning journey after meeting a mysterious fawn in a crumbling labyrinth. Her mystic quest crosses seamlessly from one world to the other. We leaving a parable about the power and pain of innocence. Figure the first thing we'll do is figure out how tall Ophelia stands. We already kind of have the assumption that she's going to be shorter than some of the other figures that we've gotten under the Guillermo del Toro lineup. But first and foremost, before we really talk about anything else, let's see that the Ultra Measuretron is telling us that Ophelia stands five inches in height, an even five inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 12.8 centimeters tall. Yes, as I've said, she uh, she is a little smaller than some of the other releases. Right now, I can do a comparison with the Pale Man. Uh, it's the only other figure that I have right now. I've yet to pick up the fawn. I don't even think the fawn is out yet. But the Pale Man is considerably taller uh, than the figure version of Ophelia, as equally so. He was much taller than her also in the movie as well. figure gets a bunch of accessories I'm actually pretty happy with. Uh, for starters, comes with the stoned pillar face here that, of course, has the removable eye. In the film, uh, recreated here as the statue from NECA Toys, the eyeball is removable, and then Ophelia can then replace the eye. Uh, unfortunately, though, as you could probably guess it, just by its sheer size, guaranteed it's going to be something that you're going to lose. So I would say be very careful when you're putting it into the eye socket. And don't bang it, whatever you do, because like I said, that's small. That's going to fall, and that's going to go somewhere else. I even thought when I got it out of the packaging that the eye wasn't included. Sure enough, I looked at the bottom of the bag that the pillar, the post, is inside of, and the statue's eyeball actually was at the very bottom of the bag. So if you do take this out of the bag when you pick this up for yourself, and you so happen to see, you so happen to see, let me see if I, oh, now I can't get it out. If you so happen to see it look like this and think that there is no eye included, just double check the bottom of the bag. Um, to its credit, I guess if you get it wedged enough in there, it seems to do an all right job of staying in place. Again, I can't promise that that will be everyone's statue. I mean, certainly, again, be very, very careful when you get this out. It's just a spectacular, not only sculpted statue, but it's actually rather heavy as well. It almost feels like it could be made out of the stone that it is in the film. All the carvings and etchings that they've put into this have shared only well with the paint also that they've added to the piece as well. You even got little foliage that just started to naturally grow against the statue facing here. It's, it's surprisingly, like I said, it's very heavy. You even got some little wet bottom uh, section to it where you can see it would have been rooted in the, in the dirt, the mud. A really nice looking piece. Very, very surprised with how heavy this is. I mean, you certainly would not want to drop that on your foot, that's for sure. Speaking of small, speaking of small, Ophelia also comes included with the key. And like I said, under the list of things p po possibly, potentially being losable, uh, this key is definitely right up there along with the eye. The key is made up of uh, very thin plastic, looks as if it was molded likely in gold plastic, and possibly, if I my eyes are not playing tricks on me, it seems also that they've added like a little slight bit of dry brushing in there as well, just to bring out some of those details. Again, fine work from NECA Toys. Put that right over there. Also included, she comes included with her book. The book is a really nice recreation to the one that she has in the uh, movie. Spined on the side, 
pages visibly. It does also look visibly like it can open. Well, it can. Inside, you can open it up, and there is actually readable scripture on the inside of the page, if you were able to read that, that is. And then on the other side, you've got the fawn. Very nice decorative work on the outside. It's just, it's these small little touches that this humbled reviewer really certainly appreciates. Even like the the weathering that they've done to the front and the back of the book just really looks good. And the bonus, the added bonus of that is the fact that she can actually hold the book in her hand. Now you gotta be careful though when you are opening up the book. It seems like it only wants to go to about there. It does look potentially like you'd be able to open it a little bit further than that, but the last thing you certainly would wanna do is break the hinge on it. So I'm more than comfortable just to leave it like this. And you can actually take it, even at the beginning of this review, and you can have her holding the book. One hand is flat, really ideally suitable for holding the fairies, any one of them that can fit onto her hand. I'll show you that in a second. But the other hand is either good for holding, say for example, the key. And the key just sort of, I don't know if you can see it or not, it fits into the palm of her hand, literally into the palm of her hand, and it sort of just rests there. It's almost like they've put the shape of the key in there to kind of give you your guide. The thing is though, the key doesn't sit very stable. It sits in there, but you gotta be very, very careful. Yeah, you don't drop it. Another workaround is again, you can have the key a little bit higher up, but again, it doesn't sit, it sits still a little on the loose side. The other thing you can do is you can take the hand and fit the edge of the book into the hand, sort of as your guide. This involves often at times prying the fingers out from themselves. And then you can rest the other end of the book against like her hand, as if she's actually reading the book. Get a little bit more of a firmer grip there on the side. Likely I'm gonna probably display Ophelia on my shelf with the book likely in her hand. Maybe I'll find the means to actually put the fairies kind of around it as well. Speaking of fairies, speaking of fairies, she comes with three. When far be it for me to give away any spoilers, as I'm certainly sure I gave them away when we had a look at the Pale Man, the fairies, we get three. I'll just leave it at that. Well, you, you get three. You get a slightly greenish, sort of greenish blue one. You get a red one or a brown colored one. And then you get a stark blue one. Each of them have their own distinct color palettes each of which have these leaf wings, which are just beautiful little sights to be seen. Let me just move Ophelia out of the way. I feel almost as if she's stealing the focus. There we go. Very meticulously painted, I must say, for its size. I mean, there's my thumb, there's my nail. You can see how small these fairies are. It would be foolish to suspect that any of, of these have posability. They sadly don't. Um, but again, like you really don't need these to necessarily be posable. Just glorious color and glorious paint added to the wings. The wings are slightly softer. Uh, you will want to be careful though, I almost did it myself, that the wings are the way that they are. They're very thin plastic here. If you bend the wings too much, you'll develop a stress mark. You certainly do not want that to happen. And then lastly, there's the blue one right there. Just great work. Great work for such small pieces. Now, as I mentioned, you can take Ophelia's arm and bend it, for example, and you take any one of the fairies, and the fairies sort of balance. They don't balance well in all honesty. The packaging actually kind of alludes a little bit better of a, a firmer planting. Um, of course, when you are standing her on a flatter surface, which I'm not currently doing right now, I'm holding her in my hand, you can get the fairies to balance. Let's see if I can actually do it here. Just get her the figure to stand very carefully. I kind of wish that there was like a peg point or something on the feet, but then that ultimately would mean that there would be a hole on Ophelia's hand or on her arm. And I don't certainly want that either. But if you get it just right, I would certainly hope I would be able to accomplish this feat during the review, but let's see if I can actually get it right on her hand. They are intended to sit on her hand, but as you could probably guess it, like, look at the feet. Some of them are a little bit more angled than others, but them all, all of them really have these angled feet looks to them. Like, they all bend. None of them are flat-footed. So results may vary as you are getting them onto her hand. I'm probably not going to accomplish it here. Dismissing this quite quickly. Hold on one second.
Yeah, it's not one to back down from the challenge. I ended up figuring out the easiest way to display the figure. The best bet is actually from the wings. If you take a look at the wings, the wings sort of have a fork to them. If you spread them just wide enough, those wings actually fit. Let me just grab another one here. They just fit right in slotted into the fingertips here. They sort of become like a bit of an aid to help aid the this fairy from standing on her hand. And it's relatively secure once you get it in place. The key is actually not having it flipped the other way, which I started this review at, but instead flipping it facing toward her. Even the angled feet seem to be not much of a restriction from causing the figure to stand or fall over. Providing you get those wings just placed in between her fingertips like here, the wings for the most part, keep the fairy pretty stable, as you can see on her hand here. As for the rest of the figure, she is really quite pretty. I think the likeness is pretty good for what it is. A smaller rendition of Ophelia here in plastic form. She's wearing her green and white dress, sporting a rather large bow here on the back. Paint seems kept very minimal here, certainly at least in the white. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of extra paint added to it, which is actually a good thing Often at times, if you add too much of a wash to a white painted costume, it really certainly does detract from it. I'm glad it doesn't, it's not the case necessarily here. Nowhere, she does get some additional dry brushing. Seems to be kind of in the recessed or pocketed areas of the frills in her sleeves, and certainly in her dress as well. She gets a little bit of that dry, darker brushing of paint in there as well. Uh, she does have her smaller, shiny black shoes folded down or colored down uh, socks. He's just kind of pulled it down there. Again, really nice, clean looking rendition here of Ophelia. Again, I'm really happy with the head sculpt. Sort of giving a surprised look, a slightly more innocent look. I feel like the head sculpt has changed a little bit from the original production images that we saw Ophelia uh, not too long ago online. Has also the green bow featured on the top, which is made of a softer plastic. Uh, the skirt or I should say the skirt here is a softer plastic. The bow is even softer from that and everything is sort of attached to place. Uh, this looks like it's attached via glue. Uh, as for her posability, let's go through that together. Her head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and it also rocks back and forth if you wanna have that slightly angled head look. The arms hinge outward to about, to about there. Bring it up a little bit further to about there. You can't really get any further from that just because the colors, the tops of the sleeves being that they're a little bit more ruffled, uh, of course, wreaks havoc when it comes to bring the arms up any further than that. The arms also rotate all the way around. She does have a bend in the elbow, which also allows the ro rotation in the arm. But it's actually, it seems like it's more so, I'm gonna say it seems like it's more so a bicep swivel than it is a hinge in the, oh, actually, there we go. The forearm also rotates all the way around. Initially, I thought it was only a peg joint and was very reluctant to the idea of turning this for fear that I would break the arm off. But luckily, and it seems like there's a swivel happening in the bicep and there's also a swivel happening in the forearm. So two times the swivel, really, it's not necessary to have two times the swivel, but it's probably the swivel in the bicep is more so just the way that the hand was attached. The arm was attached to the sleeve. Lastly, run it, rounding out the hands, rounding out the arms, the hands rotate all the way around and they hinge also back and forth. She has an upper torso ball joint. And while there really isn't a whole lot happening in the dress section, it's at least soft enough that you can move the legs back and forth and out. She does also have a hinge in the knee, but I mean, really a lot of it is more concealed articulation. I guess to some extent you could have her in a more walking stance, but often problematic because, well, unfortunately, she doesn't have a display stand. I guess if you came with a display stand, she probably could do a better job of standing. Despite that, though, she's actually doing a pretty good job of standing, even though really most, if not all, of the support of the figure is only standing on one foot, and of course the toe on the other. In the off chance that Ophelia falls over here in final looks, I've taken some precautions and attached the figure to a clear display stand, which I just happen to have readily available nearby. At least, hopefully, she'll stand up. She hasn't really had any problems of falling over, but the fact that she's also holding such, such a small accessory like the key and the fairy in her hand, I just didn't want to take any chances. One fix, actually, I found for the key. 
if you put the key in basically from her wrist and you slide it in but then you pull it from the stem of the key it fits actually a little bit more secure in her hand than just placing the key in her hand just a little tip of the trade uh, the fairy also does a better job now of standing if you attach the wings in between her fingertips which is i guess really the way that they had intended from day one if you look at the back of the packaging there's not really any other way to display the other two fairies I guess if some way you could attach them to her wings or you could attach it to the top of the statue here, but there's really nothing in place in which the fairies won't fall over. Kind of hope that they had put a couple of holes on the top of the statue, something that you probably wouldn't be able to see anyways. They could have put that as the place in which you could attach the two fairies, because right now there really is no other place where you can put the two. You can put one on her hand, and then the other two we are just going to imagine are floating around in the air right now and we just can't see them. A nice little accompanying piece to the already released Pale Man. The only other figure that we want to get, or certainly I want to get, from the Guillermo del Toro collection is the Fawn. As of right now, I haven't been able to find him in local comic book stores. If you do think that he is available right now, let me know down below in the comments section. These are nice, really interesting, unique pieces from a rather interesting, unique movie. Guillermo del Toro certainly has a vision for the way that he tells his stories in film. And I'm glad that NECA is being able to recreate that to some extent here in plastic form with the new release of the Guillermo del Toro figure collection. Good news, though, is if you are interested in picking up the Pale Man or Ophelia for yourself, both of which are available now in comic book stores, speaking as somebody that's seen both of them at my local comic book stores. Today, though, we were having a look at the new NECA toys, Pan's Labyrinth. This was the Guillermo del Toro signature collection, figure number three, Ophelia. A really great looking release. Still, again, wish that there could have been the dining room table that came in clue with the Pale Man, but again, I'm going to just enjoy for the fact that we are getting Pan's Labyrinth figures, which I never really thought that day would come. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Guillermo del Toro signature collections, including the retro cloth version of Guillermo del Toro, or if you want to go back and have a look at the Pale Man, they should be all available on this channel. If you're also new to this channel, come on board and make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below and the bell notification to make sure that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. More videos and more NECA reviews will be coming your way, so stay tuned for those. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.